Hello and welcome back to Spookier Celluloid and you're probably wondering why I'm sat so weird that's because my cat who was behind me who just left as soon as I start recording yeah she can open the door she's smart I'll just close it back up uh, yep, so I can sit regularly now. Uh, I knew she was gonna leave eventually, but uh, she's just been... Usually she sits on my chair, I sit down, she leaves, but uh, as of today she started just staying there and just vibing. So, uh, speaking of vibing, Four of the Apocalypse. It's, uh, it's, it's a film by Lucio Fulci. I don't know, I guess there was something on Instagram uh, this week or last week where everybody was watching Fulci movies. And by the way, you don't need Instagram to tell you to watch Fulci movies. You should just do it because, uh, as probably most of you know, he's my favorite director of all time. And uh, with movies like Four of the Apocalypse... You can understand why. Uh, Four of the Apocalypse is a Western. Uh, that's why I'm not covering it on my main channel. Anything horror Lucio Fulci I would cover on my main channel, even though uh, probably that some of my audience probably uh, already know about Fulci or don't really don't really care because they like me reviewing more of the extreme or underground stuff or the Asian stuff. But, uh, yeah, anything horror Fulci, uh, I usually, I'll review it for my main channel. Uh, but Four of the Apocalypse is not horror, even though, uh, there's horrific things that happen in this. But it's a western, and it's one of the, it has a reputation as being one of the most brutal western. And I think the issue with a lot of people when they think of Fulci is they don't think about the movie itself, they think about the brutality and the violence and the gore, which this one definitely has uh, gore and brutal violence, but most people often forget that behind the gore, behind the effects, behind the atmosphere, what you're left with is just a really good movie, and this is the prime example, this is not just a good movie, this is a great film, which is often overshadowed by the violence, and it's not even that violent. There is the scene at the beginning where a bunch of bandits enter a town and murder everybody, which has a lot of brutal gore and amazing effects and some amazing shots. I mean, the shot where the bandit shoots someone from behind and the chest just bursts and then its rack focuses to the um, the man who, uh, who just shot that guy is some incredible cinematography, some incredible gore. So the film starts brutal, but it takes a good amount of time to go back to brutality, uh, like the entire film. And in between that, you have uh, violence, you know, shootouts and stuff like that, but it's not as gory or as excessive as the beginning and you have some gore that is not shown uh, where a bunch of um, of uh, uh, religious people just get massacred you don't see the massacre you only see the aftermath and it proves that Lucio Fulci could not only do that guttural visceral kind of violence but also that realistic brutal uncomfortable sort of violence and this film also proves that Fulci could do characters because you feel for these people they become your friends throughout the film and whenever uh by the way this is a spoiler review uh, this this review will contain spoiler this is a film from 1975 if you're a Fulci fan you should already have seen this one uh, so I'll spoil it, but yeah, so our four main characters, you learn to love them, to like them, they become your friend throughout their weird journey, and at the end, when most of them pass away, you feel bad for them. Jesus Christ, I almost, I almost had like a tear at the end whenever, um, uh, Bunny dies. It's fucking brutal it's this is a really really sad film I'll, overall like this is a this is more of a drama in a western setting than like a western uh so yeah what's the plot i already spoiled the ending so might as well talk about the plot now but uh as i said you guys should have already seen this this is this is 
Plus, this is a fairly easy one to obtain, I'm pretty sure. This is like the old OG Anchor Bay. Anybody old enough to remember the OG Anchor Bay days when they actually put out good movies and not just shit modern modern shit <laughs> they still put out some decent movies but and then you always got like a little card and it's just a really old but nice release so yeah the plot is fairly simple like most of these uh, spaghetti westerns uh, you follow uh, your main character by, played by Fabio Tetsi uh, who's, uh, who's a great actor by the way wonderful actor he was in a lot of westerns of uh, politiski and then horror films and uh, he's a gambling man who goes from town to town takes wins some money and uh yeah and he kind of cheats at the game that's why he ends up in jail and it's in the jail that we meet our four characters we have fabio tetsi uh, we have Lynn Frederick, who plays a prostitute who happens to be pregnant throughout the film. And then you have a town drunk, Michael J. Pollard. Don't, not really sure they're about their character names. And then you have one of my favorites. Well, honestly, my favorite in the sense that he's so wholesome, so quirky, I love him. It's Harry Beard, who plays this uh, schizophrenic man who sees ghosts. <laughs> and uh, he plays that character so well, and uh, but he, all of the all of the characters are lovable. You're not sure about our main character Fabio Tetsi at first because he he's kind of a scumbag, uh, but already from the frame one, Lynn Frederick, you fall in love with her characters, with her character Michael J. Pollard. He's just asleep, passed out because he's the town drunk, and of course Airy Beard, as I mentioned, I love them in this film. He's so great. Uh, even Fabio Tetsi, you just, the film, like, just advances and you just learn to love him. So yeah, they, they all, all of the four are in jail, while the sheriff just chills out while his entire town gets shut the fuck. <laughs> That's the scene I described at the beginning, it's brutal. And then the sheriff... Uh, just throws them on a horse and carriage after taking all of Fabio Tetsi's money and tells them, go, my friends, just go. Uh, which they do. They just go and then we follow them on an adventure. They meet a religious group which uh, gives them food and stuff like that. And then we just learn to um, learn about our characters. We just learn about the characters and we just learn to love them. As I said multiple times, you love hanging out with them. They feel like a group of friends or newish friends and not sure if really they know each other but you know you know that they'll get along well um and then the religious people go their own way and our main characters go their own way and that's when they meet thomas milan the villain of this film who's only there for like fuck a couple minutes um he plays Chaco and at first Chaco is a nice guy even though he introduces himself by shooting stuff close to our uh, our group of friends but then uh, Chaco helps them you know hunting some animals getting some food uh, and eventually Chaco show reveals his real colors whenever he drugs the group of friends grapes the uh, bunny the prostitute and leaves our characters for dead well they don't exactly die and then they get out of their bondage situation to go on a uh, mission to find uh um well they don't really their original mission is to go into this a city called san something uh and after the situation with chaco even though fabio tetsi tells him that he's gonna kill him they don't really like, the, the film doesn't really become a revenge plot as soon after, you know, they get treated like shit. So there's, a, there's this, like, in between that of they're still trying to get to their city, but then maybe after they, uh, they get to the city, you don't know what will happen. And through trials and tri uh, retribution, uh, our town drunk, who hadn't been shot by Choco, eventually dies... Uh, Airy B. Beard decides to stay with his friendly ghosts in a ghost town. And, well, our main characters fall in love. 
because every, throughout the entire journey, they, um, the people they meet think that Fabio Tetsis and Lynn's character are married, you know, especially since he, she's pregnant, and eventually, you know, they just develop this relationship, and they're actually, they fall in love, and uh, Fabio Tetsi is ready to take care of the kid, until um, one day, all of this gets ruined, because Bunny, uh, Bunny starts to, you know, have the kid, uh, also in between that, they meet a reverend, I won't go through the entire blah blah blah, this leads to Bunny having the kid but dying in the process. And finally, Fabio Tetsi, after he's lost everything, the woman he loves, this friend, the money, uh, is the kid, uh, he just decides that he's going to find Chaco and finally uh, enact his revenge to uh, what is probably the most satisfying revenge of spaghetti westerns or just Italian or just cinema in general, Lucio Fulci knew how to make the revenge satisfying with um, copious amounts of blood torture. It's incredible. The ending is amazing and it's totally like one of the most satisfying revenge in uh, cinema history. Yeah, you can probably guess that I really love this film. Um, I had seen it once before and I really liked it, but today I was just in a I accidentally pressed stop to record, so for the first time ever, this, this spookier celluloid will have two clips that I'll have to edit together. Uh, what I was saying, I was really just in the mood for a good western, and I was looking at my spaghetti western collection, and most of them are are too long, I'm gonna be honest, like spaghetti westerns in general, whenever I'm just feeling for a spaghetti western, most of them are way too fucking long. Uh, I was looking at like my Mill Creek box set, like what should I watch, and then I, I thought to myself, well, you know, people are watching Fulci, uh, last Fulci film I've watched was uh, last month, I think, The Beyond, I rewatched for like the 50th time, uh, so I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I'll watch, fuck, I have two, Full ch I have three Fulci Western. One of them is like in my storage because it's like on one of those shitty like multi multi pack DVDs. Uh, the Brute and the Savage, I think, or this one. And this one is, is more more notable. It's the one that most people know. Even though I'm pretty sure the Beast and Stable, whatever the other fucking Lucio Fulci Western I have, is more violent than this. Just overall. Uh, not probably not as gory, but just as violent. Uh, but yeah, I just ended watching this one last time. I gave it like a, a four out of five. But fuck it, this time rewatching it, just this being such an emotionally like uh, just an emotionally charged film, me f really getting into the characters this time, really understanding them, and you know feeling like. They're really part of, you know, they, they, they're your friend. They're your friend for like uh, 40, one, uh, one hour and 40 minutes and then they fucking die. Uh, and then you're sad. Uh, <laughs> yep, uh, I this is a 10 out of 10. This is another spooky 10 out of 10. Well, on this channel, we had this one. And uh, Symptom, I think, was the last 10 out of 10. Uh, but yeah, this is like a, this is a 10 out of 10. If you like westerns, if you like spaghetti westerns, or even if you just like full cheek, go, go give it a watch. Mm -hmm.